talk a little Tupac and Tupac's impact. I think this is dope. This is a dope story. So there's a member of uh, the Lords of the Underground. So it's Dupree, Do It All, Kelly, who recently uh, was named city councilman in New Jersey. Yeah. And I think this is this is so cold to me. I, I love that this brother is actually out here trying to uh, actually uh, attempt to do something that was successful with it as it relates to the community. So that's dope. But he mentioned Pac in an interview and he said 25 years ago, he and I were in, a, in an Orlando hotel room and he said that we shouldn't move from our cities. He said we should come back and create nonprofits, create youth initiatives and youth programs. We might also need to do some things that we may not want that may, and that means running for office. And he said that conversation stuck, stu- uh, you know, stayed with him to all this time. I think this is dope because in my personal opinion, I feel like there are, uh, two conversations when it comes to Tupac as it relates to his impact. And there's always the conversation of pre death row Pac and death row Pac. And the guy that initially came out with trapped and all the early stuff, I don't know if he gets at as much shine as the other side. I think this is a dope opportunity to show that Pac really was an intellectual and truly I mean, cared Mac about the community. Kind of shows you where he was going. Go ahead, because I you you're the you the you one of the biggest Pac fans I know. Uh, but just just kind of talk about the dynamics in terms of his impact and how it's discussed sometimes, because this really goes to who I think he truly was. Yeah, I mean, I've always said, and, and not even just me, a lot of people knew that if Pac were still around right now, he definitely would have lived by that as far as running for office or going to the political side of things. I mean, he's from a political family right when we talk about the black panthers or whatnot he's a reflection of his mother of Fanny shakur these are uh matulu all of them were people that raised him so right that's in his blood essentially but uh speaking of the machiavelli album wasn't necessarily it was more of kind of going back to the tupacalypse now and strictly for my format a little bit like it wasn't like just rah rah like that was because those were real racially charged records Agreed. but Machiavelli was was getting more along that that political stance in my personal opinion I don't know about anybody else but you could kind of hear it coming back a little bit but just with a little different style of the, the I mean if you think about style. records like uh um what's my joint uh white man's world mm-hmm. right like that goes to your argument of what you're talking about because listening to that now is just as potent yeah the bars and what he's talking about and there's there was always a song on every album that was like that though right it's just that it wasn't all the same but i mean i believe it as far as i mean right now it's it's kind of a catch-22 telling rappers to go back to their city depending on what they do in their cities good point because as boosie said you can die in the same city you're from, you know? You're hypnotized by hate. Yeah, straight up. So if you're not a chance to rapper type person who is doing those type of initiatives and right. trying to make things better for Chicagoans and kids and things like that. Um and doesn't have like a lot of enemies. Right. He doesn't right. Ha- he doesn't have gang ties. He doesn't have his I mean his content isn't that either. Right. Right. So, I mean, it, it just depends on what kind of artist you are, whether you can kind of abide by that um, going back to your city, town, state, whatever. Right. Um, you can give in certain ways, but, I mean, like I said, it depends on the artist. Is it is that really smart for you to be there doing that? I, I mean, think- we just lost, uh, uh, what's his name, in Memphis. In his home state. Oh, Dolph. 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 Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, you can only be true to your hometown and, and state for so long before you grow too big and you knew the circles that you was around, you knew the type of people that might be gunning for you. So, I mean. And Dolph was all about Memphis. I understand uh, the point that he's making as far as Pac is concerned, and, right. but you just have to be the right kind of artist to do that. I can dig it. Any thoughts on this long? What exactly are we talking about? Just. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm not a guy from, uh, you remember, you remember the Lord's <laughs> I mean, I know we're talking about Tupac, but I don't know what we're talking about. Just talking about how he impacted this guy that ran for city council, city councilman and won, and he used to be a, a hip hop artist back in the nineties. He talked about this conversation that he and Pac had that ultimately stuck with him this whole time. 
So it's just about the concept of Pac and how Pac is viewed because there's always two sides to it. That's all. Mm-hmm. And I think this this should be highlighted because it's more on the quote unquote good side. Yeah, I, I the, really the only thing I have to say is that that's great. Um, you know, <clears throat> as far as all the other stuff and how Tupac has been viewed by you know different people and you know the you know he had his persona when he was alive right Right. yep you know but at the same time terry mentioned you know his his black panther history and you know how the united states views the black panthers right in general you know uh white america at least um so good point no i think it's great but that's really all that i have to say about it i'm mad at that jay moore talk to me well you know um I was one of those people that I didn't really want to hear. I, I loved all the music Tupac did when he was alive, right. but I hated how they kept releasing music after he was dead mm. because I'm like, every once in a while I'd hear something, I'd be like, yeah, that's dope. He probably would have worked with that person. But then I'd be like, Tupac didn't know T.I. and Ashanti. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, let's, not, let's not do that to these songs. You know, uh, let's, if there was an original vision, let's keep that. And like, right. I keep, they, they kept trying to update the formats for, for the new listeners. And I was, I was cool on that. But one of the things that I, I always did enjoy is when um, they would find uh, a Tupac interview. Right. Like, I loved, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't want to listen to Tupac talk about music at all. Right. I love for him to talk about the world and, and what, how he saw the world, you know, he, those are the things where I'm like, he saw the future. Like there's literally, literally, there's literally a clip where he's talking about Donald Trump, Yeah, you know, and you know, he's talking about how, you know, things are, you know, yeah, he's, he's talking about like, look, basically talking about income equality, you know, he's not calling it exactly that, Mm -hmm. but he's like, this is coming if we don't get it together. Um, so I, I could see where he would have that influence on so many people because in a way he's had that influence on me you right. know as far as the way i view the world and as far as the way how i interact with people you know um i think that once again if, if you're one of these people that really wants to know why we you know still talk about tupac and it's 25 years later just about exactly um it's it's the music yes the music you know because he had the joints that we love but it's when you know, he would be on MTV talking to Tabitha Soren or when he was on BT talking or to Ed Gordon. The Black Expo or, yeah, here. Or, yeah, yeah. 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 And so when, he went off. Off. So when you would see him talk about when he, when he wasn't talking about the music industry and like having beef with some rapper or, or talking about a gold chain or a car or like I always say that the, the real Tupac, the Tupac that I really loved never came home from prison. You know, like the 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 dude that who was doing all eyes on me. That's not the Tupac that made me a fan. You know, I was a fan from when I heard um, when I heard uh, when the homies call. I loved, I like trap, but when the homies call, and then like, dog, Tupac put out Brenda's got a baby as a single. Think True. about what was going on in hip hop as far as like either real something real gangster, we got to make you dance, and he puts out this song uh, about a girl that was raped by her cousin has the baby and then winds up, you know, throwing the baby in the trash can and then um and then is, is dies as a prostitute. It was well that received. That was a single. Right. Like if well you received. try somebody to do something like that today, they're not doing it. And how Facts. and the fact that he had the wherewithal to go into Interscope Records and say, "No, this is the song we're putting out and we're shooting a video." Mm-hmm. Like that that speaks more to who Tupac is much more as an artist than when I hear Ambition as a writer. I can dig it. I can dig it. It's salute to this brother, man. This is big, and I hope, you know, once he gets settled in and, you know, starts voicing his opinions on things in that area, maybe it can, some, it can evoke some change. So 